again as we continue it says repent or perish this is for Christians let us read Luke 13 Ebenezer read 13 1 to 5 Luke 13, 1 to 5. There were present at, the se at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans, because they suffered such sins? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all, all likewise perish. Of those eighteen on whom the tower in, uh, in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Amen. Amen. So, uh, this may be something that... Uh, one will say that, why are we talking about this? This may be uh, a strong language. It is strong because we have all been what? We have been stubborn. We have been disobedient. We have been, uh, we've heard God's word. Who in this world will say that he has not heard about God's word? That is why we use a proclamation as an example because the, the proclamation tells us exactly what is happening to all of us. The, uh, the prophet Jeremiah was sent out to go and tell the Israelites that what you are doing is wrong. And so in our proclamation, we use what Jeremiah the prophet said, that verses 25, 24 uh, again says, You have sent all your servants, the prophets, and that was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you send apostles. And what happened? And nowadays, in this present world, we have pastors, we have evangelists, we have bishops, we have all of those who have heard the word of God, who are sharing the word of God. How many of us have not heard the word of God? Repent. 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 But what have we done? We haven't changed Repentance means if you are going north, you turn around and go south. If you are going east, you turn around and go west. But what have we done? We are mingling everything. We are going both ways. We are doing all together. So based upon what we just read in Luke uh, 13, the Lord Jesus Christ was informed. He said, oh, see... Uh, what happened? You know, Pilate has killed some people uh, that, you know, what did he do? He said he, he killed them, which, which means he, he used a sword to kill some people. And those who came to tell him were hoping that they were bringing uh, some good news to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can say, oh, 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 oh. But the Lord Jesus Christ turned around and found that you people who are telling me these things. Verse 2, And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that those, uh, these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered such a uh, horrible uh, death? Verse 3, I said, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, that means you, those who, are, who he was talking to, and that is what the modern world, we have gone through all these things, all the pandemic, all these things, world wars and all of these things, but what have we done to repent? What have we done to change? And that is why the Lord says, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He wasn't telling them that they would perish because of uh, Pilate, uh, what he would do to them. He was telling them that they would perish in hell. 
they are going to die in hell. So when we hear God's word, anytime we hear it, we've heard it, we know what the word of God says. So I will go back to this proclamation because the proclamation tells us what we need to know, what we are doing, what we don't want to uh, do. You have sent all your servants, the prophets, pastors, el elders, pa apostles, evangelists, fathers, and even use today's media to remind us. On the radio, on the TV, people have gone, uh, gone far and wide to proclaim the good news rising early and proclaiming them, but we have not listened nor inclined our ear to hear your gospel, truth, and the consequences of perishing in the lake of fire. They said, repent now everyone of his or her evil way and his or her evil doings and dwell in the land that you, our Jehovah Jireh, have given to us and our fathers forever and ever. Do not go after other gods. That is what Jeremiah the prophet told them. Don't go over uh, uh, after other gods. That means don't worship, don't do things. But what did he mean when he said other gods? Other gods means anything that is against God's word. Satanic, demonic, occultic. Some people will say, that, oh, we are not uh, worshipping Satan. Fine. We are not worshipping demon. Fine. But what they do, the wickedness, the disobedience, the rituals, the paganisms that has gone around the world, and everybody is doing it. They say, oh, no. Wearing a mask is occultic. Whether or not you believe it or not, it is occultic. It's been documented. It's a way to suppress you and worldly habits and what is those hab uh, worldly habits unbelief unfaithfulness hatred anger resentment divisions and immorality who will say that none of these things we haven't done any of these things to serve them when we do anything of these things it is basically surrendering to the devil's agenda when we argue when we have hatred when we have anger when we have resentment when we are unfit when we are when we don't even believe god it is all the devil's uh, strategy we are serving the devil when we disobey To serve them and worship them and do not provoke me. That's what God was saying. Your almighty heavenly father to anger with your idolatry and adulterous lifestyles. All those things that we do. When we are serving other things, it's idol, it's idol worship. We may think it's not idol, but it's idol. And I will not harm you. Yet, we have not listened to you righteous father that we might provoke you to anger with the works of our hands to our own hurt and destruction in hell and that is what we are praying for so jeremiah the prophet did that prophesied many others preached repentance So, when the Lord Jesus Christ began his ministry, he started to say, repent, for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand. And then at some point he changed, the, the, the kingdom of God is with you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. He gave them different uh, translations to let them know that when they repent, when they change, so in Matthew 3, that's when he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he repeated again in uh, Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
And then when Peter also began his uh, uh, ministry, he began his uh, sermon. When the people came to say to look at him and say, "What is happening?" Acts two thirty eight says, "Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit.'" Then he repeated it again. Acts three nineteen. Repent, therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So, God is really talking to us. We know what each of us has gone through, but God is waiting for us to change, to repent, to repent, 